This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. See, we believe that Jesus heals. Sometimes we just don't believe he can heal me. We believe that Jesus can deliver. Sometimes we just struggle with believing, can he deliver me? And God's saying, I already know your heart. So since I already know, let's talk about it. Look no further for encouragement to walk in the grace of God. The Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app provides rewarding content that is sure to nourish your mind and soul. Treat yourself to enriching messages from Pastor Dollar on grace and walking in the likeness of Christ. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app to stream messages of hope, grace, and understanding when you need them most. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. People who are not born again, people who don't believe in Jesus Christ, they are already in condemnation. They already feel like they're not enough. They already feel guilty. They, 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 let me tell you something. When pe people are not born again, they feel guilty. They feel guilty. They feel, you know, like condemned. They feel like they're not enough. They got issues. They go see a therapist. He tries to talk them out of it. It does pretty good for a minute. But then you, the only way you're going to be able to get out of this condemnation is Jesus is the only way to deal with it. And, and you feel inferior. And you go and you, 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 you take some medication to try to help you not feel inferior. But you, you, there is only one. There's only one antidote for inferiority and condemnation, and that's Jesus. So he's talking about those who believe not, they're condemned already. But could it also mean the believer who for some reason no longer believes? Because I'm telling you, when you say I'm a Christian, you say I believe, and then something comes up, something happens, and for some reason you don't believe, you know what's going to come your way? Condemnation. I'm not enough. I'm not enough for God to bless. I don't have enough faith. I'm not praying enough. Because you're not believing, just simply believing in Jesus. Are you focused on you? Focused on what you got to do? Focused on your performance? Are, are, are you, is all the attention, all the attention given to you? And in fact, in a moment, we're going to find out if you have been walking in condemnation, even as a Christian. Jesus has delivered you from being condemned because of what you do. So even when you do something crazy, because you believe Jesus, you say, Father, I believe that you have set me free from my sins, and I believe that I have the, 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 the free gift of no condemnation, and you keep walking. But what has the devil been doing? Has that become harder to do? I don't hear, I'm not hearing a message of grace like I need to be hearing it. It's kind of hard. I messed up, and, 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 I, and, and I know Jesus has forgiven me, but some devil done got in my head making me think that he hadn't forgiven me, and I have fallen from grace back into trying to make it happen on my own. I'm a Christian, and I wake up feeling condemned. I go to church. I go to the Grace Life Conference, and I just, I don't feel like I'm worthy. Are you serious? I just don't feel like God want to, you know, he won't bless me like he blessed you. Do you see what religion's doing? You see, it's trying to rob you of the greatest gift that heaven's ever given you, and that's Jesus, the grace and truth wrapped up in flesh. 
but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why is this dude condemned already? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He literally says, because he will not depend on who Jesus is and what Jesus did when he was in the earth. He won't believe it. He does not, he, he, you know, to, we, we, we say all of these little words, okay? I believe, and then it be just, just becomes a, 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 an art, a, an art, a way to articulate something. I, well, I believe, and how, how, how far does that translate? I believe. Because when you say you believe something, you, 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 you can rely on it. You know, you believe that that chair that you're sitting in right now you believe it could support you, so you sat down. You didn't just stand at a whole service saying, I believe that it can support me. I believe it can support me. I believe it can support me. And, and, and you're not going to ever move to depend on it supporting you. I have to address what Christians do so much. We do this, and it doesn't translate here. We are good talkers. We run our mouth and we talk and we preach and we do all of that. And in the booth in the back in the corner of the dark when no other Christians are around and you have a chance to stand on all that, all that yakking you've been doing, all that spontificating that you've been doing, and on the inside of your heart you say it, but you just won't sit in the chair. That stunned me. I said, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do a quick check over my life. God, I need you to help me. Show me areas where I'm not believing. And I said, better than that, show me where I feel condemned. Because if I can see where I've been condemned, then I can see the fear that's there, the stress that's there, and the curse that shows up in my life. I thought this was just for saved people. But what I do is I look at myself for real. I don't have to ask five people in for a focus group. I can be honest with myself. How are you going to lie in front of God? It's like, God, show me myself. Are there areas in my life where um, I've rejected you and your promise? Have I really been keeping up with pride and ego? I know it's sitting at the table. It's sitting at all of our tables, whether you want to believe it or not. Have I allowed pride and ego to take the seat, the first seat, the front seat? Because I think I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm such a Christian now. You know, I don't have to, I, I know I'm not prideful and I know I don't have ego and now you a liar. I don't have time and you don't have time to be playing church anymore. I'm trying to dig into this thing because it's our everyday living that we encounter God. It is when we wake up, we encounter God. When we go to work, we encounter God. When we're, when we're facing trials, we encounter God. When somebody bothers you and how you respond, you encounter God. When somebody lied on you, when somebody hurt you, it's all of that. It's life. It's life that's happening, and I just don't want it to happen to you. I'd rather you happen to it, but that's not going to happen until you learn how to get real with yourself and, and, and be honest with yourself. Taff and I were talking yesterday. I'm, we were talking about, it's just so unbelievable of the fables that exist among Christian people. We have so many assumed fables, stuff we just made up that ain't nowhere in the Bible. I, I can't do that, man. Life is difficult enough without a bunch of made up Christian religious fables. How you doing today? Well, I don't feel too good. You ought not say that. That ain't faith. Listen, listen, bro. I don't need you to be pointing at me talking about I ought not do that. It is faith. You ask me how I'm doing, and I'm telling you how I'm doing. Right now, I ain't doing too good. I don't feel too good, and now you done got on my nerves. That's how I'm doing right now. 
but God is the one I depend on to make sure I don't stay in this situation and train me as I mature. So I'll tell you how you feel today. Oh, I don't feel too good, but if you let me finish before you interrupted me with your religious policing, I would have told you I don't feel good right now, but I'm trusting God. But you don't think you can do that because you think it's against the religion for you to, you call that doubt and unbelief. I, I, ain't, I ain't doubting them, I'm hurting. Aren't you tired of phoniness? And the body of Christ has perfected phoniness. Aren't you tired of the phoniness? Some people aren't. Some people find their security in their fable religious life. I don't. I just want to. I just want to live my life the way God wants me to live my life, and when it's done, it's done. I, I want to do the will of God and go. I don't want to have to go back into approval addiction. I don't want to have to go back into trying to get validated about you. I want to live my life the way God wants me to live my life, and I want to keep growing, and I want to realize that a baby doesn't grow up in three months. It, it, it takes time to grow. We're all still growing, and we're all still maturing, and we're all still learning, and that's why you're here today, to get some more so you can continue to grow, to get some more so you can continue It's like eating food. It's spiritual food, and I'm the chef, and I'm feeding you some spiritual food so I can provide some Nourishment for your emotions, nourishment for your hard times, nourishment for your bad days, nourishment so we can show you that you don't have to be condemned, to show you that you are enough. <laughs> they will roll bells down no more. <laughs> Nothing, dude. I'm excited that we can believe God. And so, the truth that condemnation is because of unbelief in the Son of God, it, he, Jesus reaffirms it in, again and again. Let, let me show, show you him saying it in, in different ways. In John chapter 8, look what he said, John 8, 24. Because of condemnation because of unbelief. Before it was condemnation because of what I did or didn't do. It, now it's condemnation because of unbelief. So what is Jesus going to do about the condemnation that comes because you don't believe? You're a free moral agent. What is he going to do because of that? Verse 24, he says, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. So imagine the guy, we're just talking about belief amongst us who believe in Jesus Christ. We don't have it all down perfect. Not a bad deal. We're going to grow into it. We're going to be all right. But think about the guy who's not born again, who doesn't believe in Jesus at all. He lives his life in condemnation. He dies in his sin. And Jesus said, I already had everything you need. I'd already forgiven you. I've already made a way for you. I've already cleansed you. I was just needing you to believe it and sign for the package so I can get you free from this condemnation. And, and, and the world's living in condemnation. Money is not the answer to condemnation. I'm telling you, I don't care how rich they are, how famous they are, I know some of these people that call me in the midnight hour and say, I'm about to kill myself and I just won two Grammys. What happened? You're already in condemnation. And he kept, he kept warning. And, and you don't think you need to still witness the people. There's so many sad people in this world who have perfected phoniness to smile in your face and look like ain't nothing wrong. Measurable. Couples getting up, looking like they all in love, about to cut each other to pieces when they get home. <laughs> I'm telling you, these United States of America, filled with phoniness and filled with mammon, where everything is done, motivated by mammon. And we're the, we're the light that ain't got time to shine. Now, now, let me make sure I correct that. Jesus is the light. Amen? But he lives on the inside of us so we can release that light. You got it? 
And then look at this. John 12, 48. John chapter 12, verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. Jesus said, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So he's still talking about this guy who won't receive Jesus, this guy that won't make Jesus the Lord of his life. And then John 16 and 9. So how do we fit into this? I mean, brother, brother we're saved. We, we made Jesus the Lord of our life. We believe in Jesus. John 16 and 9. Um, go to verse 8. Let's read through this. Verse 8 to, to 9. And when, it, when he has come, the Holy Spirit now. now. Now, here's the deal. We are living today... Hopefully, you're depending on the Holy Spirit to be your God through life. You know, the Holy Spirit, somebody does something crazy to you, the Holy Spirit say, keep your mouth closed. Don't say nothing. You need to listen to him now. He's your God. If, if you didn't need a God, he would not have sent the Holy Ghost. So obviously, you need some help. The Holy Spirit is your Ezra. He's your helper. You need some help. See, that's the first thing you got to do. You got to recognize, Lord, I need some help. Come on, join me. Lord, I need some help. Now, you might not need no help right now, but you're going to need some help. You're going to need some help. Life is a path. It's a journey. You need the Holy Spirit to be with you through that journey so you don't hurt nobody. <laughs> you need some help because sometimes you need to learn the vocabulary of silence. Sometimes you talk too much. Sometimes you need the Holy Spirit to tell you, shh. Yeah, but Holy Ghost, they just talk about my mama. Don't know about talking about my mama. Shut your mouth up. The Holy Spirit wants to lead and guide you and talk to you in everyday lives, not just when it's time to give a word. The Holy Ghost just said to me, thus saith the Lord. He'll do that, but he also talks to you about, uh, don't, don't go this way this morning, go this way. Uh, 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 let, let Leroy go. I, 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 Leroy got some stuff, you, you know, you, you don't know about. I, 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 let Leroy go. Yeah, but he got curly hair. My baby gonna have good hair. Let Leroy go. He knows something about Leroy you don't know right now. See, some of these dudes think they can play you, but when you're when you a Holy Ghost-filled woman, it's hard to be played when you got the helper on the inside of you. And, and when you don't want to hook up with a woman that's trying to use you just for her own financial benefit, the Holy Ghost will let you know she don't love you. She love this house. She love that paycheck that she saw you deposit. Let Frida go. <laughs> I apologize if your name is Frida. I'm, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, glory to God. You need some help. You're a student taking a test in college. You need some help. Holy Ghost, I know this in here, but I, I can't recall it right now. And the helpers show up and say, it's A, circle A. I don't know about you, but I don't want to deny help when I know I need help. I don't know everything. I, I don't understand everything. I need help. Hallelujah. I need help. And you shouldn't feel bad for needing help. You got a very present help. Inside information help. The Holy Ghost, I thought the Holy Ghost was just, I was scared of the Holy Ghost. All I knew about the Holy Ghost, folks get to screaming in church. You ever, Y'all, some of y'all, I came from a church they used to get, they call it get to shouting. And that was when they were singing a song and somebody closed their eyes and, and they get to moving, get to moving. And then it was an explosion. Yes, sir. Bam, knock that usher that way. Yes, sir. Bam, knock that usher that way. And then they, like they in a convulsion and stuff like that. And then right after that, they say, you want the Holy Ghost? No. <laughs> no, I'm good. I thought that's all that he was going to do. You're going to talk in a weird language, spit, and, and, and have, and that's, that's all I knew. <sighs> Until I got to know him myself. And I found out 
that the first act of the Holy Spirit was to pour love in my heart, supernatural love, to help me to love what was hard to love, what was ugly to love. Well, I, and I found out the Holy Spirit wants to lead and guide me. He wants to be my guide. He wants to be my leader. All I needed to make my mind up is to follow him. You see what I'm saying? So these religious ideas and fables, it, it, it stole some of your life from you because you were, you, were, you, were, you were relating to God based on these false fables because you didn't know it. Well, it was in the Bible. Yeah, but you didn't read it. Preacher wasn't trying to read no Bible. We're trying to make a sermon to get you to hoop and holler and give it a 10. And that's why I don't mind reading Scripture and going through Scripture. I ain't up here trying to see if you bored or not. You should have went to bed. It ain't my fault you falling asleep in church. You went to bed too late. You come to World Changes, you got to go to bed. Okay, let me get back. I'm tripping big time. Let me just... And when he has come, he will reprove, correct, the world of sin and correct righteousness and judgment. So check it out. Of sin because they believe not on me. Notice what he says. These people that are not born again, it's the reason why they don't believe on me. And I, all, I related it all to people who were, um, were, were not born again people who are not saved. And these thoughts kept coming up. Are there Christians that have stopped believing on him? Son, talking to me, are there areas that you stopped believing on him? So you got the Christian lingo now, but have you stopped believing him like you used to believe him? Have you stopped sitting in the chair because you don't think it can support you no more? Do you holler trust but afraid to lean on what you say you trust? I was like, God, I, I, uh, I'm not trying to preach condemnation to anybody. I, and I know we live under grace, so I know this is, I just want to be a better, a better Christian. That maybe I'm examining this because I, I, I want to be a better Christian. I want to be, I want this to be real. I don't want to be in self-deception. I don't want to leave that thought I had when I was reading this and studying this and say, oh, no, I, I believe. And I know good and well there are certain areas that I say I believe, but I struggle to depend on it. And I thought that this church was mature enough for me to bring this issue up, not to condemn you and beat you up because you're already heaven ready. But this is for people who say, Lord, I, I, wanna, I wanna mature more. I, I wanna get better. And I don't wanna be in deception. Avoid the danger of non-belief. There is an ongoing battle inside our minds that makes it more important than ever to reject the false solutions the world offers. Creflo Dollar presents a timely three-message series, Only Believe, which reveals Jesus as our only solution and shows us how to receive him. When Jesus gave his life, we were delivered from the curse of the law. And in essence, we are delivered from condemnation. The message to the saved world is just believe, don't perform. <laughs> Holy living is still the objective of grace, but you have to believe right in order to live right. Your living right starts with you believing right. Secure your copy today with a love gift of nine U.S. dollars or more. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit www.creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. It's time to end the battle. Hopefully, you're going to choose to let heaven determine your thinking because whatever choice you make, then that's going to be your mentality for today. You try to get in a Hawks game because you just think they love you. 
ticket, I have love. Uh, security? Can you say that he's a way maker? Yes! Can you say that he's a god that sits high and looks low? Yes! As long as you think you can renew by yourself, you're gonna just depend on your self-effort to do this. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitude. Get the message of grace any way you want. Streaming live on the Creflo Dollar TV app, mobile app, the Changing Your World podcast, and daily confessions on YouTube. Stream service live 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday with re-airs at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I think you would be amazed at what Creflo Dollar Ministry does every day around the world. Testimonies come in from all over about the impact we have. And I wish you could see the kids we feed. Their lives are changed and impacted for the better because of you, our givers. The seeds you sow into this ministry make a mark that, uh, that can never be erased. And I wanna thank you so much for your financial contributions into the kingdom of God and into this ministry. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. We never want to assume that all of you are born again Christians. Being born again is the key to experiencing God's promises in your life. It's the most important decision you can make. I wanna say a prayer of, of salvation with any of you who would like to receive it right now, receive the gift of salvation. Pray with me and just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that Jesus was the payment for my sins, that he was the sin offering. And I receive him as my peace offering. Jesus, come into my heart, save me. And today by faith, I receive you and declare that I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, I wanna welcome you to the kingdom of God. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.